What's going on everybody? Cody from Motorcycle MD. Welcome to another video. In this one, we'll be diagnosing a runnability issue on a bike. Now, this is a lot to unpack, especially when the bike has aftermarket parts like different intakes, uh, open exhaust, and of course, years and years of opportunities of different owners to molest the bike and put parts on it to the point where they can't figure out why it runs so bad. So they pawn it off onto the next person so that person can then spend money and the cycle continues. So if you've ever found yourself or currently find yourself yourself on the receiving end of this process where you now have a bike it runs a certain way it's not correct I thought it'd be interesting to walk you guys through the process of what we will need to go down to find out what's going on with this specific 2003 VT 750 shadow and with as much experience as I feel like I have you run into trouble things kind of stump you. And even with the different experiences that I've gained from bike to bike and repairing and fixing and solving, the process is always the same. You eliminate things that are problems and that really goes for any diagnosis out there. When of course you can't plug a computer into it and it tell you what the issue is. So I personally felt like the value you can gain from watching this type of process is priceless. And as we diagnose and dig further and further into this bike and things get worse and worse and it can become more challenging when you think what is common sense and what works and what has worked in the past, is now being acted upon by something that you can't quite figure out in that moment. And in most cases, what I see when you get to the point of frustration and money loss without the results that you're hoping that will happen leads to the give up phase. You have exhausted all knowledge that you have gained and maintained through the years. And man, is that a frustrating and taxing place to be. But with all that being said, I think you're really going to enjoy this video. I think this is going to be broken into a two-part process. And if you can relate to anything that I just mentioned, as far as frustration of working on your bike, wanting to know more, wanting to get some personal help, maybe even on your problem, there are tons of resources through Motorcycle MD that can help you guys out. In the description below, there is a free course, 40 plus videos on how to maintain your bike consistently, maybe even find problems along the way that people have found extremely helpful and it's totally free in the description below. And if you need more personal help, maybe you need to talk to me, Check out the Inner Circle membership. I have a community page where we can talk and diagnose your bike as a unit. And of course, grant you access to hundreds of videos that are not here on YouTube as far as carb cleans go, specific to your model bike. And plenty of stuff that I know will help you guys out. In the description below, check it out. With all that being said, sit back, relax, and let's figure out what the hell is wrong with this bike. <laughs> All right, so we got us an 03 VT750 Shadow. Customer complaint is sputtering, keeping an RPM. It's kind of sputtering or doing something funny at speed. Doesn't seem to matter what speed it's at, but it's sputtering and hesitating. I don't know, we'll see. You gotta test ride it. Quick overview, aftermarket exhaust, no muffler. So it's open pipe, uh, aftermarket intake these things are pretty treacherous they're extremely heavy looks like another shop might have put some brackets on there to hold this thing in place because it's just god awful heavy and they usually never fit right but it's there this is a dual carb model being an 03 dc got a couple of loose stuff going on we can fix that got some grommets missing here I'm surprised you didn't lose that on the way over here and it's very green customer said that they also replaced the fuel filter on it maybe hoping for a fix he wasn't quite sure if it uh, started happening after that or before but we need to test ride this thing make sure that it's good clutch is a little tight I asked him if it was having trouble getting into neutral and he said no but we need to adjust that out real quick a little bit of free play in there there we go a little bit of throttle free play that's good and a little bit of a loose seat it is bolted down, you know, at least there's that going for it, but we will persevere. All right, so let's throw a helmet on and see if we can't get this thing to duplicate its issue.
All right, so the test ride proved some results. If you're a technician and you are watching this, that would be cool, but I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to duplicate the problem that you are facing. If you just go off of what someone says, when it happens or how it happens or what temperature or time of day it is, and you take that and dive straight into what you think it might be, you're gonna get yourself into trouble. Okay, because you're going to waste time and energy and once the problem may have been resolved and you go to test ride the bike and the problem now feels like it was never there to begin with, you really don't know if you fixed it or not. And I have personally made this mistake a number of times because sometimes what the customer has experienced may not be able to be as easily as duplicated as when your riding style then is introduced onto that bike. And of course, if you are the owner and you know what the problem is and you have felt it, pinpointing exactly when, where, and how is super helpful especially when it comes to a carbureted bike where the manipulation of jetting and how the carb functions at certain RPM when it's taking in more air or less, the remedy to the problem can oftentimes be found or pinpointed better when you can explain exactly what and when it's happening. But as you saw, this bike immediately told me the problem and it happened so quickly that I was actually kind of shocked. But having the opportunity to feel the issue and was very helpful for me to start to think through the process of what needs to be looked at when we get that bike back on the bench. So let's get on the bench. Okay, so the fuel valve barely works. So now that the tank is off, we can start looking at some stuff. The first thing that I found was this R choke arm right here. Okay, on these, you have a rubber boot that needs to be holding on to our black piece back there, a little plastic piece, and this is partially pulled out, which means that the choke could be partially being operated on because this cable that sits in there. I don't know if I can see that in the shot. It needs to be pushed all the way in, which means this is probably routed incorrectly. And I might need to adjust it so it can sit in there clean. And then this boot needs to be attached because this boot actually helps hold it in place. Without it, this thing can pull the choke. I'm pulling the choke right now, the plunger system. It shouldn't be like that. It can take in air from right there if it's not making a good seal. It could just be overly rich and we could actually verify that because this carb is going to the rear cylinder and we could pull the spark plugs here and see if they are different in color compared to the front right i can't see the right side yet the plunger system on the right side because the air system is in the way um next thing i see we do have the fuel pump system that's on these they just replaced this one and that one was already there or whatever i'm not sure the case is it doesn't matter but you don't need to do this you know you don't need to have two different fuel filters in line for this thing you have a fuel filter coming from the tank collecting anything that is if it was in the tank which i haven't even looked over there yet this is collecting stuff going into the pump to save the pump right you don't need another one this could actually cause a little bit of a, a restriction. Not too much, but it's just unnecessary. All right, it looks like our mixture screws have tried to be adjusted. Our cover is gone off of it, so someone's been in there, which is fine. Looking to see if the carbs are down in their flange boots, and it looks like they are. I'm going to pull the right side off, go out to that air filter, and see if we have the same symptom going on with this choke plunger here. And then what we'll do is we'll just pull the plug so we can get an idea of what they look like. I'd probably take this and put a little bit of some sealing goop on that, give that a fighting chance. So it does look like this one is on. Yeah, that one's on. So that's good. And the carburetor is fully seated, so that's good too. All right, let's pull these spark plugs out, see if we can see anything. Right, let's get these easy ones first. They're a little loose. They are the right plug. I like they're pretty new, actually. I don't think they were fully seated into the head, though. I'd say that's a little lean. Let's see what this rear one looks like. I'm curious about this one. These are nice and tight. Again, these look relatively new, but not fouled out, maybe a little lean. I have seen where owners don't even know. I think it only has one plug per cylinder, but Han does not do that. And they won't even know that these spark plugs are even here. And they're sometimes they don't have the tools to even get to them because they are can be a little tricky. Like for instance, my spark plug socket does not go down in there. So what we'll need is something like this spark plug socket. I think these used to come in the tool kits for these. Alright, they were replaced. 
it's the right plug, but very white. It indicates a lean mixture. And that spark plug, look at that. It's completely crushed on top. It's the right plug, but it's mashed on top, so that could be a problem. No gap whatsoever, which means it's barely even sparking. So, that's an issue. It might have been dropped on the ground and installed. I doubt that it was ever hit by the piston. That would be, in this case, since the motor is running. Or it could have been dropped in there and not, who knows? But that's not gapped whatsoever. And that's why we pull all the plugs and not just one or the other. Also helps to have a little rubber dinghy for your spark plugs. Especially for these bikes. And when going to take this off, I noticed that this isn't even attached to the carb. So it's just kind of just chilling. Sucking in roll air, not being restricted, no band clamp that I can see of, so it's not supposed to do that. And of course you always find some cool craftsmanship like people, the clamp's right there. I mean it's right, why not just, I don't know, I don't know, but this has to be removed. So we'll pull the boot off of that. This is a 10 millimeter, oh it's not even tight, okay. Cool, I can just do it by, by, by hand. So, spark plugs, window into the motor. Uh, this bike is showing all signs of it being lean. Not enough air to fuel, or not enough fuel to air, if that makes sense. It can go on both sides of that. Doesn't really matter, it means exactly the same thing. But one very helpful outside of the box thinking when it comes to a carburetor issue, or a lean to rich issue, or whatever you got, there's two sides of the spectrum that you can attack that from, right? If it's too much air to fuel, you can richen the jets up or make them bigger, and that solves the fuel side of that air-fuel mixture. Or you can go on the opposite side of that and remove the air from the already established fuel mixture, if that makes sense. Keep that in mind as we progress through this video and somehow eventually get to a conclusion how profound that is when it comes to carburetors as a whole. Don't care what bike you have or what modification you've done. So some other small things I noticed was a lot of the cable routing for the choke system, as we saw, is kind of wonky. It's not routed correctly, which is very, very common. Actually, everything that I found on this bike to be wrong is usually what you would see four out of five bikes that you work on of this age. Too many people not knowing what it looks like, and then it just gets repeated when the next person looks at it and thinks that what the last person did was right, so they just keep it, if that makes sense. So when I'm talking about this thing not being fully in, that's how it should be, this boot. Sometimes they can tear, but it's holding on to this plastic piece, right? But when it's outside and then cocked up like that, look at that plunger, which is how the other side is. It's like that. So that choke's kind of always being functioned on, which it should not. It should need to be all the way in and locked in so it can't pull itself out. The plunger feels a little gritty. That's cracked there, the nut that holds it on, because somebody cross-threaded it. So that's cracked. So hopefully these are being functioned upon. Nice, we want a nice smooth buttery choke that we know is re retracting back. And while we have our intake stuff off, we can go ahead and do the carb sink on it. Our ports form are right here in the sides. Phillips head screw, and if you ever notice this hole in the top of the frame, that actually allows you to access where our Phillips head screw is in there. So we'll crack these loose, put some uh, rods on there and our sink gauges, and we'll see where this thing's at. This one's a little bit different because on this side, the port we want to get at is covered up by this faux engine cover. Grab these so we can get this cover off here. And there is our Phillips head screw right there. All right, so you probably won't be able to hear me because of how loud this exhaust is, but be bottle feeding it, all the plugs are on. I won't start with choke, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna get it idling. We'll be watching these two dials. This will be our front cylinder. This will be our rear cylinder. We're just gonna try to bring these into sync or they may already be there. I don't know yet, but this is just a really easy check that we can do since we're in the situation that we're in right now with everything removed. So, let's get this thing fired up.
it takes right there. I don't know if you guys heard that, but it already sounds way better than it did before. And now the carbs are in sync. So let's put this thing all back together and then we'll go for a ride. All right, we're back together. I did extend this bracket out here because the way that it was positioned, it was pulling this thing in and it was undoing it from back here, kind of pulling it out of the gasket. So got it on there so it's a little bit straighter. Right, hopefully that won't be a problem and it's, and it's a lot tighter than it was before so side covers not going anywhere seats still whatever but with all the work that we've done into it right now i don't see a reason to go into the carbs and start looking at stuff we're just gonna i mean we solved like four problems right off the bat so this is the way that things go i'm gonna take it on a test ride see if the problem goes away if it's still there then we gotta take all everything back off again and keep going but that's enough things in my head to be issues as far as the way that it runs. So let's see if it fixes it. Hopefully it does. If not, I'll back apart again. This is where it starts to get a little challenging. This is where frustration starts to build just a little bit if you don't have that under control when it comes to solving so many different problems and then the result is not gone. It's still there. In fact, it appears to be a little bit worse, which then sends you in the opposite direction of the forward motion that you once had. But we really haven't even scratched the surface on checking off all the boxes of what should be and how it should be functioning. All right, so we need to see if we can find something weird going on. If the CV pistons are torn, I'm more interested in finding out what the jetting is. So we're just gonna take this apart. Someone's been in here, obviously we got Allen screws here. That's not stock. We're, we're missing our clamp to hold this cable in better. So that was kind of a bear to find, to fight these things out. But let's see if we can't find anything weird. So we have our rear cylinder and our front cylinder here. see it that's good these all look good slides look good let's see if they didn't shim the needle or if it's an aftermarket needle it's aftermarket okay we have this shimmed all the way to the bottom most position which raises this needle up a lot which isn't too bad we have one more step we can go but they're aftermarket Um, we will need new bowl gaskets. That is flat. Completely flat. So these, if I put them back together how it is, it'll probably leak. Our main jet, looks like is a 130. Okay. And our idle is a 42. So let's see what we're supposed to have. VT750CDD. So 40 slow jet and on these models they put a larger main jet in the rear cylinder versus the front. So the front calls for a 105, the rear calls for a 110. They do that so they can cool the rear cylinder down a little bit versus the front which is up in the air, out in the air. So we're at a 130 rear which is pretty substantial. So 130. So the stock is 110. Let's see what the front is. Again, another spent bowl gasket. This is fine. Pull this main out, and we have a 125. So they did step down properly, which is good. Put a smaller jet in the front compared to the rear, so that's good. Someone knew they, what they were doing, to one, which is interesting because that's kind of where I would set the jets at as well if I was having a problem. Unless those jets have been punched out, there's a chance that somebody drilled them bigger and I don't know what they are. I'm just looking at the numbers on the jets where you never really know until you mic that type of thing. We have a USA 40, 42K. I've never seen that. USA 42. I've never seen a jet labeled like that. Okay. I was hoping to find something a little bit different. No issues found yet. Nothing that I wouldn't have done the same with. 
Everything that is seated, that's cool. No rips or tears in the boot, that's cool. And clip height is set the same for both, so that's also cool. Let's go ahead and pull these air cuts off. See if that's doing anything weird. Got a spring, got a gasket, and that looks good as well. I have a feeling this is going to be an oddball situation. I'm going to have to really look for a problem. So going through this carb, ripping it all apart, trying to find something wrong. Um, everything was looking pretty normal. The mixture screws were uh, kind of even, about two, two and a half, something like that. Um, went to pull these seats off float seats and behind that one which is that seat right in there I'm starting to see on the filter itself some debris around it so when I looked further there is a lot of debris behind the rear cylinders fuel filter so something's coming in or trying to make its way and that's packed full of stuff this one's got some crud in it but it's nowhere near as bad as this one. So that's interesting. There's definitely some crud. So, what I have not looked at is the tank. The inside looks like there has definitely been some rust going on inside this thing, which is a bummer. The reason why I'm pointing towards this now, or why I'm kind of bringing this up, is because it could lead to a few different things. So notice we have the two fuel filters installed and if there is sediment leaving the tank beginning to restrict this filter then it has to go through the pump and then make it back through another filter which resistance, resistance, resistance of potential fuel flow that's needed at that higher RPM. I can't tell. It looks relatively new. I can still see the pleats inside of it. It's not jet black but that could be resistance and we could also be damaging the pump I think we're narrowing in on something. All right, so I got a new fuel filter. We need to see what is going on behind here. This fuel valve is bad. It's It leaks in the off position pretty aggressively. And you don't really want that. You want to be able to turn the fuel off and know that it's off. So we'll see. Probably need to flush the tank a little bit. And just Might be some sediment oh yeah so that was a fuel filter and a post at one point but that is now all gone this is pretty common to see oh boy okay so the brass tube that usually comes with those is probably inside the tank somewhere or it's just stuck right here but regardless it's completely disintegrated so we need to peel what may be left of a fuel filter out of here the best way that I've found to do it is to grab an edge and peel it towards the inside of itself like that it's all breaking off there's part of it that's the bottom half of a fuel filter. We gotta flush the tank out. So now I'm curious of what you guys might think may be the problem going on here. When it comes to all of the fuel filters, I left out a few more that also could be adding to that restriction that I'm talking about. The fuel pump's not really restricting anything. It's actually helping things along because the carburetors sit so high in that frame, the gas tank then hangs over the carburetors and then having a gravity fed system doesn't work too well on that kind of model. So the fuel pump helps transfer the fuel to the carburetors where it needs to be, especially when you are asking a lot of the fuel at a higher RPM. Now, if you remember correctly, when we had the carb apart and we had the float seat out, there was a filter underneath the seat. That was where a lot of the particles, sediment, crust, rust was found settling down before it entered into the fuel valve. So that's what fuel filter there. 
We also have the fuel filter inside of the tank, which we took apart and found that it was now gone. That's filter number two. We have a third filter going into the fuel pump from the tank. That's a stock system. That's filter number four. And then we had another fuel filter leaving the pump going to the carburetors. So that's filter number five. And that's when restriction can come into a factor. At least that's what my brain is thinking when it comes to particles in the carburetor now being able to clog up all of the systems along the way. So I'm curious of what you guys think. In the comments below, what is your guess as to what could be happening? You may think this video is going to end a certain way, but I can promise you you are in for a surprise when we finally figure out what we needed to do to the bike to get it to operate. And if you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel. We do videos on motorcycle repair and modifications and bike builds that I have a couple going on at the time. And be sure to hit the notification bell at the top so you are notified when new videos come out. And again, if you guys want a free course on how to maintenance and take care of your bike properly, in the description below there's a link to that. And while you're there, check out other things that Motorcycle MD can offer. I got apparel and also the Inner Circle membership where you can find a lot of help when it comes to your bike. Can't wait to see you guys in there. Until next time, Cody from Motorcycle MD bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time. Later.